gonna say? I forget. Try get out. No. <laughs> no. Um. I was gonna say we have to take a break, but look, can you do a song and then we'll take a break after the song? Sure. Uh, would like three minutes be too long? No, whatever. Okay. It doesn't matter. I'm on time wise. I'm a loss. Yes, me too. <laughs> All right, here's one. Here's a new one. So much for promise, and there's nothing to be done. Pink cheeks trickle across the auditorium. That was Tom. Like a moon eclipse the sun. The kitchen's quiet now and everybody's gone. I hear his sneakers squeaking loud on the linoleum. And I wake up with the pain in my guts. Hopelessness does collect like drops of rain that always pull in my palm. So many years ago, and I'm not who I was then. I can't see far in the fog. It's a bittersweet life living for the lost. After he was gone, I'd walk around with his mom, laughing all about those silly things we'd done, and tears would run, like the streams that we once swung. But just like lightning never hits the same place twice, before you know it, you're dragging 20 years behind. I'll go flying through my memory And buddy, you've missed so much Hopelessness does collect like drops of rain That always pull in my palm So many years ago and I'm not who I was then I can't see far in the fall It's a bittersweet life living for what's lost. Drops of rain that always pull in my palm. So many years ago, and I'm not who I once was. I can't see far in the fall. Oh, ask me if I I knew it all. All right. Live in the KMCN studio, it's Joel Sires, live on Midwest Review Live, I should say. Yes. And uh, welcome to the Wild Rose Casino and Hotel Studios. That's what you're sitting in right now. Just in case you Very were wondering. Nice. I was. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more from Joel Sires after these messages. i got to get the right mouse here. We'll be right back. It's good stuff, I should say that too. Hey, the Geno's impressed me. They've been in business since 1974. That's so fun, dude. Thank you. That was so fun. I'm comfortable place. I have to say good stuff. Pizza. Geno's has a variety of specialty pizzas for you to try, such as... I got a call one day from somebody who said, Hey, you know how you always say good stuff? I said, 
Uh, no, do I? Yeah. I didn't know that. I go, sorry about that. He goes, no, no, it's cool because we made a game out of it. When you say good stuff, we drank. Okay. Okay. So, okay. And now, if I don't say it, I'll call and say it. Amazing. You're like, I thought I was responsible for only one alcoholic. <laughs> Uh, I was having a little trouble with my camera here. I think it's going now. You know. It wasn't live. I don't know why it wasn't live on Facebook, but it is now. Boy, Ross had to drive back. <laughs> he might have left me. He got lost. Do you know any of the guys over at Iowa Public Radio or anything? You ever? Uh, just Bob Door. Yeah. I think he might be rolling on the way out. I thought I thought Bob was retiring. Yeah, I don't. I think he just does the. He does the like the Blue Avenue, Avenue and then like uh, Blues. Riff. No, he doesn't do Blues before Sundays. Uh, what's it called? Blue Avenue, I think it is, isn't it? And then he has Beatles medley. Right, that's. But I know I he I don't think he he just does it all from his basement. Because yeah. my buddy is like the, the uh, I don't know, some high up guy at IPR, Al Shares, who's a stud guitar player and played with Bo Ramsey for years. Sure, I know. Yeah. Tonight, weather, clear skies, northwesterly winds, miles per hour. Yeah, did you see the uh, the movie, uh, the Mill movie, where it's like Greg Brown and like uh, Bo Ramsey and Dave Zolo and like Dave Moore, they're showing it at the Angler. Did you see yeah. that? Five seconds. Okay, sure. Sorry, man. I'll get yapping. I'm Billy Rose. You're listening to Midwest Review on Mac FM 94.7. It's good stuff. Welcome to the Wild Rose Casino and Hotel Studio Midwest Review Live. It's brought to you by The Block That Rocks, Savannah, Illinois. I got Joel Sires live here in the studio. And we've been talking a little bit. He did a song before. I hope, I hope. You can see everything now on on Facebook because for some reason my camera kicked off and uh, I think I got it reestablished now. Anyway, if it's not, you're listening live on the streaming, I would assume. Anyway, Joel, welcome again. You know, uh, now we were talking a little bit about uh, your songwriting and stuff, mm-hmm. and you you said you're not a good song. Yeah, and I stand behind that statement. <laughs> okay. okay, if you insist. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. But uh, where do you think you can improve? What What is it about uh, the songwriting process? Well, I, uh, you know, honestly, I think I think uh, like I think I'm about maxed out with physically what I can do with my voice and my guitar playing on, at time. Just more time put into it, and more, you know, where I'm, I'm, a, I'm. I'm a real stickler for that though, like like words and stuff. But I uh, I just wish I had more time. I could improve by sitting down. Sometimes the 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 reality of it is, I'll sit down and I'll be playing for ten minutes. I'm like, gosh, why isn't it coming? It's like what? And then I and then I know after about an hour of sitting there, which I rarely am able to do, but if I can sit there for longer than an hour, then it starts coming, you know. And then it starts. Uh, I'm like, oh, I start surprising myself. I don't know. That's really the trick is just uh, I just pick up the guitar and mess around until absentmindedly will be messing around until something catches. I'm like, whoa, what is that? That surprised me. So then I go with it, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's always room for improvement. Otherwise, I don't think you'd have guys who are still doing it uh, like this far into their actually successful careers. So. Right. Very true. And, and that was that was the point I was going to make is. You've been doing it for how long now? Uh, probably about 17 years. Okay. Yeah. So if you weren't a good songwriter, you wouldn't be still doing it. Yeah, I for sure. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I will. Yeah, it's just hard. I'm not very good at like taking compliments or giving myself compliments. But <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't think I'm that ridiculous where I can't tell if I'm like bad at something and I just keep going. So. Right. Do you find, speaking of, you don't like to take, 
or it's hard for you to take compliments. Yeah. And stuff. So when it comes time to promote yourself, you find that difficult to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I try to do it at, with as much of like a wink as possible. And, you know, I, I, I try not to take, I don't take anything too serious because, you know, most of all my songwriting heroes have a, a sense of humor right. and are, you know, uh, they can write some devastating stuff. And, but also, you know, the next line's really funny and sweet and tender. And, <laughs> and I love that, but yeah, yeah. Promoting is, it's such a weird thing. It's, it's, I used to be a lot more on the ball about it. And, uh, I've noticed that since I kind of let those other aspects of uh, like, I don't know, a music career go, you know, the, 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 the more I let go of like, oh, we should, you know, do this on social media or whatever. And the more I focused on the things I could control, the more fun I've had, you know, I, I, I've kind of let everything go except for the songs and then like the relationships I have with the people that, you know, I get to play with or promoters or whatever. And I, I, I had a big change like a couple of years ago. I just was kind of getting to a point where I was like, I don't, how do I keep doing that? I love it more than anything. I don't want to keep doing it forever, but it's like, how do I do it with like dignity? And uh, just, I, I was just like, what's the right way to do this? Cause I know I'm not <laughs> on the right path. Right. And uh, I don't know if you know the band brother trucker from Des Moines, I mean, you just played a Jim Viner song. He's their drummer. And, right. uh, well, I played Brother Trucker earlier, too. Yeah. It's and, Andy. Flattery. Yeah, and he's, like, my biggest hero and inspiration. That guy, like, changed my life. I was at, like, a weird low point, and I was like, how do you do this? Get better and not be kind of a goofy joke. And I saw him and his band, and I was like, that's that's how you do it. And he's become one of my best buds and biggest inspirations. So. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, there's nobody better, so – just as an all-around man, too. He's, he's my hero, so. Have you ever collaborated with him? Or? We've talked about it. We've done a million shows, and we've done, I guess I sort of have, because we've, over the last couple of years, we did, uh, we uh, had a we had a gig set for his band to come up, and they all couldn't do it. So Andy, just being pro, and he's been doing this for years, I get to the venue, and he's just like, hey, how about you and me just sit on stage tonight, and we just swap songs. And uh, I, I haven't been doing, like, just acoustic solo music for very long now. And this is about a year ago, so I've been doing it even less of it. And I'm just – anytime he asks me, I say yes, and then I just figure it out. So he, he's just he's just the king of just working on the fly. And he's like, how about you and me set up and we swap songs? And I'm just like, okay. And then after it came out of my mouth, I was like, I'm dead. Cause, <laughs> and, uh, and that's been some of my funnest shows. We've done probably four or five – with him, his guitar player, uh, Matt Cullen, and then myself and my guitar, Jacob Lambin, we just swap songs. And it's literally, it's one of the most rewarding things I've like musically done in years, if ever. So well, that's cool. So yeah. yeah, we have collaborated in a roundabout way. Well, yeah, that, that sounds like fun. You know? Oh, it's and, super fun. Yeah, sure. Have you ever written with him? Or? I haven't. I've, I've been like meaning to write with friends, but it's just like such a, I, I just write in like a really like a uh, uh, little stops and starts really, you know, I'll like get something. I'll be like, okay, I have the bones of like chords or whatever. And then I just kind of like pick away. And so I don't know. I, I, I haven't written with anybody for a long time. The last person I did was with my brother and uh, I just don't know. It's like time is so valuable now. I don't want to show up and be like, Hey, I'm going down to Andy's on October 9th to write a song with him. And then I get there and I'm like, don't have anything. I just, right. it would terrify me. So, no, I don't really write with anybody. I wouldn't mind trying it, but they'd have to have even less to do than me. So, <laughs> I, I think Andy's a great songwriter. Yeah, he's one of the best. He's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I I think you guys could work together. He could probably pull it out of you. You yeah, he, I mean? he's that kind of guy. He could for sure. He's like a, he's an angel. So you were t you talked a little bit about dog years. Mm -hmm. You recorded that in uh, Shell Rock. I did. Yes. At Chandler Ltd. Chandler Limited Studios. And, yes. Uh, have you recorded there before? Uh, yeah, the last Twins record we did there, um, and. Uh, 
that one was a little more of like a drawn out process because I, I didn't come in as prepared as I normally do. I kind of just went in. I was like, well, I'll just see what happens. And then I sort of like had like a, my songwriting change a little bit because we used to do a lot of like real kind of hard rock stuff, real 70s like hard rock stuff. I still love that stuff, but I don't really write like that anymore. So with that last Twins record, I, I was sort of transitioning to doing like quieter songs. And uh, so that one drug out for a couple years. And a lot of it was just myself and Seth, the guy who is now my drummer and produced it. Uh, a lot of it was just kind of overdubbing. He, he and I would work on it. Uh, and you know, little fits and starts. And then Dog Years was all recorded live with a pickup band in a weekend. And it was like, I think it's the best sounding thing I've ever done. And it's just like the most natural sounding, which is what all I want to do now is just what sounds real and natural. And, right. you know, so. Well, I was going to say, I really like Dog Years. I Thank like you. all the songs on it. Thank you. Man. Uh, perhaps my favorite is Mexican fireworks. Cool. But I also really like, uh, what is it? The second one, Jesse. Uh, the late, great Jesse Gates. Yes. Uh -huh. Who is Jesse Gates? Uh, actually, no one. I didn't have a title for it. Okay. And at the time, I was working in a cemetery. And uh, I was just, uh, I was like trimming around headstones in a cemetery. And there was somebody named Jesse Gates that had died in like the late, 1800s or something and then i was reminded like the town van zandt album the late great towns van zandt and i was i just liked the rhyme and i was like i needed a name for the song so i just named it that <laughs> there's not a lot of cool. forethought into this type no of thing, no though. but it works I, yeah i um, really like it i like that song I, thank actually you, i like all four songs thank um, you thank you for playing it too yeah, i appreciate yeah, that no problem it's good stuff Yes. Got the good stuff in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> For you, uh, what do they call them? Buttery cobs. <laughs> Buttery cobs out there. Yeah. Uh, dog years. You know, now, I hope you don't take this one the wrong way, but with twins, you put out the albums, and it was like a couple baby steps between each album. Mm -hmm advancing them sure and i feel in, in my own mind that dog years was a giant step cool and i don't know how you feel about that but... i i think so yeah i don't think that's very far off uh you know we went in and i'm not i'm not saying i'm responsible for like that whole like on my own but I think maybe we all kind of went in with like everybody was like just there to like do what was needed to serve the songs. And I just had like a, a lot of my friends who were just like uh, really into just like subtle playing and leaving room and uh, like all, all the, like the guys played with such nuance and like grace. I mean, yeah. They did a lot of it, but they came in with just like, okay, what can we do? You tell me what you want. And which usually when I would tell them what I would want would just turn into them doing whatever they wanted because they have better ideas than me. So <laughs> yeah, the band was a lot of it. And then I spent a lot of time working on the songs and uh, maybe I didn't, we didn't play those songs out live very much. Whereas with like twin songs, we would literally just play the songs live for like a while before we got in the studio. So maybe that had something to do with it, but. So did you, when, when you went in with the songs, did they change much from when you originally had them? And to uh, the end not a lot. Um, no, not a lot. Just okay. Like little little things here and there, yeah, for sure. Because once you bring other people in, they I, right. I love having like the guys that play with me like add what they do because it's like they're great. So what they bring to it is always better than what I would ever thought. You know, I might be like, Hey, could you try something like, and I, or something. And then they like, are like, well, how about, and it, it'll just be, I'm just like, yes, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I'm really lucky. I've been, I've played with really great people. The, out of everybody I've played, I've always been the worst guy in my band. And that's my advice to people is be the worst person in your band. <laughs> I get a kick out of you. 
<laughs> Can we hear another song? Sure, man. I'm going to just do another new one because I'm all warmed up from the winery. All right. This house is all bruised, deep on down. Busted windows and boxes piled up. No good reason keeps us from leaving. Yeah, Shut a slam and no paint is peeling. It, it's on. I can't get it any louder. I don't know. I've got it turned up. Yeah, what you I want to dig right. through the wreckage for? Still burn. CN studio. That's uh, Joel Sire on Midwest Review Live. That's a brand new song, or yeah, mm -hmm. recorded? No, nope, it's not recorded yet. Neither of those two are. That's going to be on my next record, hopefully. So, when you went into the studio to record Dog Years, how mm -hmm. many songs did you record? We recorded five, and but the last one we didn't get to finish because we did it all in a day and a half. So. Oh, okay. The fact that we did it all, that I, that's crazy. I mean, uh, people might be like, well, it took you two days to do four songs. Well, yeah, but that's a lot. And, and if you make records, you're like, that's that's a pretty good clip. So, yes, uh, that was basically everything that's on there is on there. And uh, okay. what was the, the one that we didn't finish was like uh, just raw instrumental. So we didn't get around to it. So there's nothing secret in the vault. He's back. <laughs> yeah um so you you continue writing all the time or yes i do yeah uh yeah i'm just maybe worried if you if i stop then i won't be able to do it again but 
Yeah, no, I'm always writing. It's basically like the only like hobby I really have. So, and my guitar is always at my house. So I'm always working, you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, you can tell when you're hot and it's like a little more of a, everything's kind of coming and it's actually, actually some serious stuff. You're like, well, I could use this or, you know, I spend a lot of time just working on stuff that I never play. So right. just to keep the muscles working. So you now, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but I'm going to mention sure. it. So. <clears throat> you have worked as a grave digger mm -hmm. and a garbage truck driver. Mm -hmm. Any other jobs? Or uh, yeah, I've had a bazillion. Oh, yeah, 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 I've had a bunch. I worked at like a, uh, like a nursing home for a lot of years. I did that, taking care of folks there. Um, I've, I've been a, I sold women's shoes for a while which my buddies got a kick out of that when I told them I was doing that. Uh, I've worked, I've, you know, worked at the, uh, at the cemeteries and I've been a garbage man. I've cut down trees. I've done just basically about anything. Okay. Yeah. There's probably about 10 other ones I could tell you right now too, but that would take up the rest of the show. So yeah, I've done well, it all. Now in each of those jobs and a lot of people say, Oh, unskilled labor. Well, mm -hmm. I don't care what you do, you have to have skill for the job you're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. Manual labor, there is skill to manual labor. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. I think now the skills you developed in doing those other jobs, it's like selling women's shoes mm -hmm. or whatever. Do any of those carry over into music or? Uh, for sure. Yeah, I would think so. Um, maybe just in like discipline of trying to work on something and in every day, whether it be just 10 minutes that I can, you know, find the time, uh, or, you know, and just basically from being like hearing funny things or having an experience that I can turn into an idea for a line and then get rolling on a song. Um, Sometimes that happens if you're lucky. Other times, realistically, you're kind of just like, you know, thinking about something else, doing what you got to do to get through the day to, you know. Yeah. I wish every day was like that and I could pull some sort of like, you know, inspiration out of it. But I tried to do it as much as I can. But, you know, just like everybody who has a job, they know some days you're just there. So <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had a lot of jobs like that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I got to play a legal ID just because uh, it's in the legal time here. Yeah, and the cops are waiting right outside the door to get you. That's right. They are. They're here for him, folks. <laughs> so if we can be quiet for like 10 seconds and this legal ID will play, I'm not even going to shut off the mics. So that's what you're going to hear, people, legal ID. Back 94.7 FM, KMCN, Clinton, Iowa, our general broadcasting station. Okay, that was a little loud. Oh, I thought it was a new Pink Floyd album for a second. <laughs> so, can you hear good out of your phone? Yeah, uh -huh. okay, yep, I got it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a little hot there. Yeah, so, we're kind of winding down on time here. We could go on forever. We could. We I probably know, will after I know hours. You got to drive ahead. Yes, I do. So, uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. I've got some stuff here. Okay. Um, we've got like I don't know five minutes or so. Sure. But anyway, uh, I, it's been a pleasure having you here, and. Can you tell people how they can get your music? Is it available online or? Yeah, I'm one of the lucky people that have worldwide distribution via Apple Music and Spotify, so you can find me there, just Joel Sires, S I R E S, or you can go to my website that my wonderful wife made for me, and that's JoelSires.com, and I have my shirt on in every picture on the website, Bill. I promise. Really? So yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Send me those pictures. <laughs> what I'm doing, I try to do, is uh, where is Cornelius Cobb? And then yes. send me a picture and he is here. You know, 
and Joel, he's with hanging with yes. Joel, and they, they're at the Unidome or yes. whatever, you know. So yeah, cool. <laughs> so we got a little bit of time. Can we hear one more song? Sure, or? man. Yes, and uh, right. thank you for having me. Thank you for playing Iowa music, and it's very kind of you, and I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. All right, this one's Jesse Gage for oh, Bill. Yeah. Good stuff. Stayed up all night Reading about a zodiac sign Picked out a name from the side of a passing train Telling precious secrets To anyone who listened Stealing tips off the table of a truck stop cafe she walked out on a fortune somewhere back east. Now she's selling oranges on the side of the interstate. Laughing at the offer, never really said no. Cause the arms of a stranger still a warm place to sleep. And that's our lonely and only her reflection is coming through. Nothing left to lose after the shadows cut loose. Feet on the dashboard, knocking around this small town where the angels break the news over ticker tape. Struck up a bum deal in the back of a dark car. Now there's nothing left to do but buy the tongue and walk away. She's gonna find her own way, cause there's no worse fate than crawling back to that mean old daddy in LA. And that's our lonely and only her reflection is coming through. Joel Sires live in the KMCN studio on Midwest Review Live. Thank you, Joel. I Thank really you, appreciate you coming. My pleasure. Man, it's been fun. Yes. I, I had fun. Having this. I absolutely did. It's been good stuff. Yes, it has. <laughs> you got it, people. That's for you. You buttery cobs out there. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I hopefully everything came out okay because I don't know why the video I had it on and then it, it you know why off, so. it saw me and it was like no <laughs> untrue untrue <laughs> all right well I appreciate you being here thank Joel. you man I, I and, appreciate uh, you you know whatever Ooh, sorry about that that's all good <laughs> I can't hear so <laughs> wow sorry anyway uh I appreciate you coming by, and anytime you want to come back, let me know. Absolutely, I sure will, yeah. man. Um, do you play in this area, or do you? Uh, we've we've done Davenport a bunch of times. Okay. I guess I don't really didn't know there was much, you know, of a scene going on, Clinton. I'm definitely gonna like look into it because well, we we haven't had a whole big lot of a scene. Yeah, whole, whole big lot. Well, we haven't had much of a scene. When I graduated from high school, there were probably 40 bars in Clinton. 
and yeah. 30 of them had live things. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, yeah. It's, it's a lot different. harder to find places to play, that's for sure, yeah. But good thing is a new brewery is being built as we speak here in town. So they're, cool. I'm assuming they'll have some live music. Uh, Brooke Byam has a, a little a listening room in downtown Clinton. Yeah, and I like that. I don't know if uh, Beth Lee and Chris Duarte are down there. I, I'm not sure if they're, they're probably done by now. They started at five. But yeah, it's a great place to go and listen to music. So you people out there, you got to go try it if you haven't been there yet. And uh, that's going to do it for me. I got to go because I'm out of time. And uh, we'll see you next time, okay? Don't forget to reuse, repurpose, recycle, repair, and reduce. And uh, I love you, man. Texting or you want to text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Yeah. I haven't seen you around the gym. Yeah, I've really fallen off since I turned 40. I just don't get the results I used to get. That was so yeah, fun, man. Thank, awesome. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was a good time, dude. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ross is making me drive back. Your turn. Sounds good, Jenna. Work in the gym. Yeah, no, it's uh, very easy. Works out just right. Perfect. Can you hear us, Dan? Yeah, it was great. Just paid to say that.